everybody. Welcome to the live episode. We are calling JHS Amps in a Box. We do not have guitar amplifiers in an actual cardboard box or anything. We're talking about pedals that JHS has made, which replicate some form of, uh, you know, the sound of an amp. Should be fun. We're doing a giveaway um, at some point of a brand new Twin 12. The Twin 12 is this guy right here, based around an old silver tone, 1484. All right, we good? We good in the room, everybody? I'm Addison's good. Addison's over here on moderation. Hello, hello, hello. Invisible Katie is in the room, and uh, we're good to go. We're good to go. So let's start off with, uh, let's do a couple questions up front. Questions up front. Yeah. Okay, so we don't have any um, questions rolling in quite yet from the chat here. Uh, quick plug, if you've got questions specifically about um, today's episode or about JHS pedals or, heck, even about anything that's not about today's episode or JHS anything. pedals. Anything like at all. Pizza. Pizza. <laughs> Josh, what's your favorite kind of pizza? That's today's Chicago first question. Dish. Okay. What kind of toppings do you like on your pizza? The tr like sausage, the traditional okay. sausage patty. Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I had the best gluten-free, dairy-free pizza ever. So joy-free. <laughs> no joy. I had that in Chicago one time, and it was fantastic. Okay, um, okay so let's let's actually ask a question related to pedals here. Um, all right. This question comes from uh, Patreon. Uh, Alice, sweet Alice, shout out to you. You always have great questions. Um, always. Any plans in the future to do an artist series of pedals, Josh? Artist series as in visual art? Oh, or no. Or art? Think, because, yes. I mean, even today I have yep. two artist pedals here. Yep. The Andy Timmons and the Paul Gilbert I'll talk about. So... How about, how about plans to add more artists to the roster? <sighs> They're hard to do, yep. but they're so fun. So there's a serious reward, like, as... As a designer and, you know, a pedal company as a whole, we all have a blast with it. Paul Gilbert has been the most fun ever. Um, I don't know. They just have to happen. Yeah. It's like it, I need it to be organic. Like, yeah, the last thing I want is the artist who doesn't actually play the artist pedal. Right. Absolutely. But it's, if it's about artistic visual artists. Yeah. Yeah. I'm interested in that, too. Always have been. We used to do hand paints in that fashion. And yep. then I think... Um, yeah, we're working on some stuff with the show, like some new shirts and getting some artists involved and doing some limited things like that as well. It's a great question. That is a good question. Let's do one more and then I'll roll into That's great. some guitar. Um, any plans to do a, a slow, Soldano slow inspired, inspired pedal, Josh? None. Like <laughs> negative plans. Zero. That's I've never even thought about that. I've never played cool. the amp. Uh, Mike's a cool guy. I think I met him through Brian Wampler, who knows him really well. I think Brian has a really nice Saldano style pedal. So go buy the Wampler, whatever that is. Nice. That's not what it's called. It's, there's no pedal called whatever that is. That'd be a good name. I need to write that down. We're getting a lot the of JHS whatever that is. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll write that down. Okay. We're getting a lot of JC120 in a boxes, please, or in, would, in a box, please. <laughs> I would actually consider that. That's awesome. Can, let's. Well, you want to move to playing? Is every you guys want to? <laughs> you guys and guys want to hear some playing? Um. First off, I have some very exciting guitars at hand here. Um. There is a brand called Glary. So, it's like. Gary and Larry, but combine the name, Glary, correct? Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. This is one of the coolest strats I've ever seen. It weighs... That's a big statement. Let me back up. This is one of the coolest strats of this kind of strat and genre that I've ever seen. It weighs... Five ounces. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like a zebra, so... Yeah. It's out of tune. I'll tune in a minute. And then we have one that got a lot of uh, commotion, I think. We had a lot of comments, right, about this, uh, this guitar, Katie? Was this the one? A lot of comments here. 
That's a good looking guitar. Yeah, it's it's a. I mean, what we have going on here is a is a skull. We have uh, there's it represents a lot of death, and this is obviously the Grim Reaper. Got to be right. Is this the Grim Reaper? We think so. Yep, definitely the Grim Reaper. We have a full moon, maybe, but it's kind of blurred. I've tried to figure out the narrative of this. We have trees that are obviously... What well, One thing, you know, if you're a detective, you have to look at this and go, there's no leaves on the tree, so it's obviously winter. So the Grim Reaper, winter skull Stratocaster. What do you guys think? I mean, what's some comments? We got any comments on these guitars? Let's see here. It's interesting. It is. I'm going to um, play this later. Um, I'll play some death metal. Oh. I don't actually know any death metal, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, did we get a Glary sponsorship? Are we sponsored by Glary? Mm-hmm. Um, here's the thing. How do you define a sponsorship? Because these did show up. That's true. And they're amazing. That's all I know to tell you. They just showed up. Sometimes stuff shows up, and that's fine. I don't know. Because, like, if you look down at the desk, this Pikachu showed up. We're not sponsored by Pikachu. See? Ah. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. Let's play. Let Let's me tune it. up here. And while you're tuning, um, yeah. any idea how much these guitars cost? And if you don't, I do not. I have no idea. Do you want to? All right, back over to you. Yeah, Take yeah. Take it away while I tune. Yep. So these guitars are somewhere between eighty and a hundred dollars each. Um, Josh, if you move that's your, all? yeah, that's it. I don't know what shipping costs. I assume that they're made overseas. Um, but shout out to Glary. Thank you for sending us um, three guitars. Yeah. Josh has shown you two. So, Josh, if you if you switch back over to you and move yourself left or right a little bit, you're gonna see our our red Glary that we have there in the back. Uh, it's fine. Oh, they it's get the idea. yeah, yeah. They get the idea, so you can yeah. go to Glary's website and check these out. Oh, free shipping! Someone says so. Um, yeah, eighty dollars. To me, these enforce the you know philosophy that I carry on the show. The guitar's fun. This is a zebra guitar. Come on. Actually, I'm probably gonna drop some pickups in it and go to town. You were yeah. you were telling me about that. That's great. All right. Let's play. Let's play. Let's talk about Amps in a Box. So, Amps in a Box is a term that I'm actually not sure exactly when this started. It started before I ever made a pedal. I remember getting into the DIY scene, and there was an amp called a Brown Sound in a Box. And I don't know who designed that, but there's several legendary DIY designers on forums like... Uh, DIY stomp boxes and stuff like that. But I remember brown sound in a box. It was a big deal. And I know that boutique builders have taken that and used that format. It's different stages uh, acting as tubes. And you have an amp in a box. And then I think the most prolific pedal builder to do amps in a box is Brian Wampler. Back to Brian Wampler. He's phenomenal at it. His plexi drive is awesome. He has amps that, that emulate an orange. He has the Saldano stuff. He has uh, Dumble. I mean, he's just very good at drives. Brian's a fantastic overdrive designer. And I think from my perspective, he's the most prolific and kind of the driving force in making those popular. I don't, I don't think there's anyone that's done it quite like him uh, from the scene and for like towards where we are now and then now we see this a ton i mean jojo's doing them you know that's like so we think like asian cheaper asian brands are doing them and yeah i think it all started with with guys like brian and the work that they did so i naturally fell into this because i love amps and have a ton of amps and so if we look down here i'm just going to tip up my path it's literally uh up in the corner here that's just the loud is more good amp i have the waza tube amp expander just to add a little bit of reverb you can barely hear it and it's helping not blow my face off here or the back of my face which is not a face it's confusing and i have a little bit of delay yeah 
you'll hear it when I turn the drives on in a minute. So let's start and talk about my Marshall in a box pedals. And I think a good place to start is to talk about the JTM 45. So this is a JTM 45. This is essentially, if you watch the episode, what is a blues breaker? I talk about how the JTM 45 and a blues breaker amp are the same exact amp. One is a combo. Eric Clapton made this famous. But we see the JTM 45 and the vintage Marshall aesthetic and sound made huge by Hendrix. Um, it's just a tube amp with 50 to 100 watts, depending on the models. There's some different wattages, but you're looking at like 6L6, 6L6 tubes, KT66s. And if we go to this tabletop view, the Charlie Brown is emulating classic JTM45 Marshall sounds. So what we're doing here is there's been different versions of this over the years, but this is the newest version and you have volume and drive. And so a true JTM45 won't have a drive knob. You just turn it up until it's loud and sounds amazing, but it's very painful. So to pull that off, this is you can think of drive as like a master volume, if that makes sense. Uh, you can think of volume as a master volume, sorry, and drive is actually like volume. So as you crank up the drive on an amp, it distorts and saturates, but it's painful, so you need to roll back the volume. And that's the case with how I've always approached these uh, from a design perspective. So with that said, clean signal. And then... So classic Marshall... Hendrix to ACDC is like how I would describe this. I'll turn the delay off for a moment. Now this is a Strat. I'm not gonna go out of the way to grab other guitars, um, but I'm gonna play, I'm gonna pull the mids up and just go as distorted as it will go. So as you can tell, it's not a distortion pedal. Um, there's sometimes confusion over the Charlie pedals. What's the difference? And it's really simple. It started with this, and this is like the angry brother. So you have the vintage iteration of a Marshall sound, you know. If I roll my volume off, which you can maybe see, it cleans up just like an amp. But this pedal is one of the sleeper drives in our line. When people get a hold of this, stack it with something like a Morning Glory or a Tube Screamer or your other fate, like a Timmy, a Klon, just name your favorite buzzword overdrive. There's so many great ones out there. This pedal loves to stack with other things. Um, and as you can tell, like that's a really great transparent sound. Bypass. I would assume that a lot of people watching are slightly surprised at how this is sounding. A Strat through a Charlie Brown is like a Charlie Brown probably does not register with most of you, if any of you, as a great transparent overdrive. But it's based around a vintage Marshall amp, which is a variation of a Fender Bassman circuit, which is an amazing, loud, clean amp that overdrives a little. So. It's like the more you know. Maybe Nick should make a the more you know, a new stinger. I don't know. We'll do something like that. How about we have any questions on the Charlie Brown? I'm going to go through each like that, I think. Yeah, that's great. Um, let's see here. Um, what uh, maybe maybe the next one you can cover is the um, let's see here. Angry Charlie. Somebody said, yeah, how, how are they differing? Naturally. Yeah. Yep. So how are they differing? Yep. Yeah. If you see one pop up, let me know. But I'll go 100%. right into that. So cool. 
They are different in the sense that the Charlie Brown again is a, J, is a JTM 45, so 1960s, 70s Marshall. Okay. And yes, some of those get really high gain. But when you go to the Angry Charlie, you are dealing with this, a JCM 800. You're dealing with high gain modern Marshall. What's funny is it's 2020 and I continually forget how old I am, but like I'm calling modern Marshall an amp that's like 40 years old. You know what I mean? We, <laughs> we all struggle with that. So you have the vintage sound and the modern. So Hendrix ACDC has always been my cues for this because that's a pretty broad range. When you get to this, Van Halen to Rage Against the Machine. Like, that's a wildly crazy spit, but that's kind of what you're dealing with. You have a true distortion sound with tons of mids. This is with a Zebra Strat that I would say the pickups are very low output. I actually love low output pickups, but you know, it's a cheaper guitar and they're definitely not overwound and you're hearing how distorted this is. So if I were to grab a Les Paul, which I'm not because I'm lazy right now, you would hear, you would hear less of the Stratty sizzle and just more of a compact hard rock sound. <laughs> What you're kind of hearing because of the Strat is how, it's like Eric Johnson. It's like high gain, but a Strat. That's kind of the cue here. Even with all the gain, like it's pretty defined. Yeah, the three band EQ is crazy as well. I'll show you for instance. The EQ on these two pedals is identical design. I used an active three band system that's actually nothing like a Marshall amp because the Marshall Amp EQ is quite useless in my opinion. I know people are now unsubscribing and sending me hate mail, but I put an active EQ that really does some stuff. It's really useful. So I'm gonna cut the mids out, do like a scooped mids, uh, buzzword alert, and then I'll do like a boosted mids thing. Ha I'll haunt the mids. <laughs> Oh, so scooped. It's like ice cream. With a strap, that sounds cool, though. That sounds great. Yeah, you need this rig, Addison. <laughs> that is cool. Yeah? I'm in. You're I in actually me? want a Charlie Brown now. I'm not going to lie. You want a Charlie I Brown? I really do. <laughs> That's awesome. The point of the show is that I sell my own employees <laughs> more pedals. <laughs> Yeah, again, this is probably something a high gain fan is not realizing an Angry Charlie would do. That's kind of that classic 80s LA session tone or something. Uh, let's crank the mids to a ridiculous point where they're haunting that brings more volume Yeah. 
What did you think of that lick? Was that a good lick? I would like you. What? I'll do it again. I would like. <laughs> Hey, hey, Josh. Hey, Josh. There's no comment. Can you please stop? I'll stop. Uh, yeah, let's. <laughs> I have a question. Go for it. Before we move on, uh, how did the Charlie Brown get its name? Lots of we want to know that answer. <sighs> yeah. It doesn't make sense, but it did at the time. What I'm about to say is going to confuse so many people. The. All right. This sound is technically referred to as the brown sound, right? You've heard this. Yes, I have. It's the high gain, heavy mid Marshall sound. But before the 800, you would hear Van Halen records and things where the classic Marshalls were hot rotted. And this got close on an, on the V1s. It was a lot higher gain actually in some places. Charlie Brown is a reference to Brown sound. Mm -hmm. But now with the V4, it really doesn't do the Brown sound. Okay. This, it, it's a bizarre situation where the name hmm. is just fun. Does like it bother me a little? It's fine. It's totally fine, everybody, that the pedal called Charlie Brown isn't the one that does Brown sound. I mean, couldn't we just rebrand it? No. Oh, okay. That's a, that's exhausting. Okay. You have any other questions? Oh, uh, let's see here. Um, While I, you do that, I'm going to yeah, switch yeah, yeah. to the skull yeah, guitar. Yeah, perfect. Um, ooh, the skull guitar. Somebody said if you have a bunch of uh, guitars with like skulls and stuff on it, you have a graveyard of guitars. Ha, ha. <laughs> <laughs> Was that funny? Um, all right. This is from John Gogo. <laughs> This is not particular to JHS pedals. He wants to know, are you familiar with the Kingsley pedals? Yeah. Yeah? What do you think of this? I have not played... What it, what it, no, 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 no. I played... Is there a pedal called the Kingsley Gesture? Yes, Gester? there is. Gesture? Je I believe it's the Gesture. It's like it's like really big and expensive. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I played it. It was awesome. Nice. It was big and expensive. Yeah. That's so, not a negative. Thing. No, no, no. Yes. Yeah, it was that. huge. Yeah. It was impressive. But it was good. No, it was very good. That's what matters. There's a lot of big yeah. pedals that I are. I think it's a very jumble good. thing. Oh, nice. Okay. That's awesome. Um, on the topic of Angry Charlie, how does the sound in the Angry Charlie differ from uh, what's in the Boss JB2? That's a great question. That's a real good question. So, and that question is from, uh, ooh, man, Xavier. Xavier. Yep. Okay. I hope I said that right. Yeah. So. When we did the JB2, um, the there's design constraints, constraints, yeah, design constraints, which are obviously the boss enclosure and the number of knobs you can fit on a pedal, and then how do you put two pedals into one case and share a certain number of knobs? So yeah, we couldn't do six, I mean five knobs, not gonna happen. So basically, I took that circuit, um, and turn i fixed all of these where i wanted them so imagine i found my perfect spot next to a blues driver fixed the controls took the pots out put a resistor where that was and added the original angry charlie single tone control back on top of it well yeah it's witchcraft but it's easy you know <laughs> Maybe to some people like Josh Scott. Yeah, no, it's it was just like how do we limit this down? Yeah. To use the dual concentric pots and such. Yeah. You got anything else? Um, just a comment from Josh Masara. Every guitar Josh holds look like looks like a children's guitar. Yeah. I've always there's a meme of me from like a Sweetwater Festival, 2015. I'm holding a strap and I'm like, the strap was small and like this. It was like, so Dave Matthews posture, nice. and I'm outside. Y'all, it literally looks like a mandolin. And somebody put like, Josh loves mandolins. And it was a meme. It went around. Did it hurt my feelings? I don't know. I'm how, fine. I'm how, totally fine. <laughs> He's not fine. He's crying. How tall are you, Josh? I'm six foot six, but okay. the doctor recently said I was six five. Whoa. And that has spun me into complete and <laughs> utter chaos. 
Because wow. if there's anything you're sure of, it's yourself wow. and your physical stature. But the doctor looked at me and said, six, seven. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm six, six. I'm, it's Michael Jordan's height. And he's like, no, you're, you're six, five. Is that a six, six on your license? Because if so, then you're a liar. You yeah, that, right? my whole life. Yep. There is one possible option that I have been shrinking. Whoa. That's possible. Okay. All right. Let's move on. You want to move on? Move on. I, I would think love we're to. at the bottom of the barrel on that one. Yep. <laughs> okay. Let's do let's do the Super Bowl. So the Super Bowl is this guy right here. So this is a very, very fun pedal. Super Bolt is a name that reflects an amplifier called the Supro Thunderbolt. So Supro Thunderbolt Super Bolt. Um, this amplifier, there's actually one above my head on a shelf that you can't see in original. Um, but this is an amp that is allegedly on some pretty fantastic recordings. Stairway to Heaven is supposedly Jimmy Page's Telecaster into that amp. Is it for a fact? Who knows? Uh, but it's a fantastic amp. Um, the one I found actually found in a barn loft in Mississippi and like had to Whoa. build it. It's pretty wild. Nice. Uh, rebuilt it and worked okay. on it. But yeah, it has a 15 inch speaker. It's it's two larger power tubes around 50 watts, and it's just interesting. It's an interesting amp, and so the concept here was take the circuit, replace the tubes with FET transistors, and we dial each one in by hand. Yeah, we made it for a while. The new version has a red remote, which actively switches the toggle in real time. So if you have the pedal on, high gain is here, low gain is there. So you notice the LED changes. So if you have a red remote switch, you can do that in real time. I'm just going to start in low gain and play a little bit. And I'm on the, uh, what did I call this? The Winter Skull Graveyard Reaper. I don't know. I had Nailed a great it. name earlier. Nailed it. Here we go. So the the beauty of this amp is that by cranking these Supro amps, Valco, they're made in Chicago, you would see a lot of this brand they choke up really fast. They kind of decay and fall apart when you crank the knob. Uh, when you crank the volume. So we'll go as high gain and go backwards. You're going to notice it kind of sounds like an amp's going to die. Like if you've ever had an amp, I've definitely done this. I remember playing a session at a small silver tone amp and I kept playing it all the way up and the transformer blew up and the session was over. But right before that happens, Whoa. it's like the best sound you've ever heard. So you got some good tone that day. It was great. Ooh. And I think I had to redo the take later. But anyway, <laughs> and it cost me like $400 to fix it. But oh, gosh. that sound is really cool. And it's this. They're howling. The I was going to ask the, you what's going it's on. the potting in them. Yeah, if I had humbuckers, you would hear it actually like like choking and, and blooming out like there's a compressor on it. It's really close to doing it, but it's not. I gotta do it. Hand me the Les Paul. Oh, I okay. To, yeah. I have to play the Les You know Paul. what? People have been asking for it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. I think it's over there. You're right. It's all right. If you're watching a live stream at Wednesday on Wednesday at three, you don't care what we do. It's fine. They don't. Thanks care for at being all. here, by the way. Me or you? But oh, okay. all the other people. All the other people. <laughs> all right. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like struggling. So it's 
So this drive is used a lot like that, but recently, and what I mostly see people doing, again, like the Charlie Brown, they use it as like a medium gain, low gain overdrive, which is cool. That just blew everyone's head off, that's fine, but. It just sounds like a cranked amp. That's some good Fet, tones. Fets acting as tubes. Nice. And um, yeah, it's really great. Any uh, questions about the Super Bowl? Uh, you just said um, Fets acting as tubes. So yeah. uh, somebody asked, this is Stephen Manley. Good question. Are all quote unquote amp in a box pedals the same circuitry as the amp, except they use Fets where they'd normally be a tube, like you mentioned with the Super Bowl. So can you elaborate gotcha. on that design maybe? Uh. No, it's a great question. I think most of the times, most times they are. Um, especially when I think of like Wampler, Brian Wampler, I think he's probably leaned into that really well and understands it more than anyone I know. So in mine, if you look down here, this is yes, yes, no. These are variants of a... Uh, Marshall Governor, mm. uh, which Marshall made to replicate Got it. sound, and then it's highly modified. And then this is a crazy thing where it's blending parts of this, parts of another pedal. Because these are, you know, amps in a box, like most amps, are quite similar, but they're not at all. If you, you know, 30,000 foot view, they're very different. But up close, it's similar parts, counts, similar parts. Got it. Yeah. Okay. I hate to do the pizza analogy, but you yeah. know, five cheese pizzas yeah. can be very different. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Somebody asked, this is uh, Andrea. Hey, how would you guys, uh, no, uh, let's see. Hey guys, how would you say the Super Bowl compares to a Dumble style pedal? Nothing. Nothing like it. Like yeah. it. Nothing like it. Nope. The, the Dumble, we've, we've been through this before. Yeah. Um, if you go back and watch the buzzwords explained video is that the right title correct yeah i go into depth about the term dumbbell-esque it's mm. kind of funny but there are a lot of pedals that claim to be dumbbell-esque and the problem with the dumbbell style pedal is you there isn't a dumbbell like there's just not a dumbbell sound i think it's just tricky even like at this point, saying a Fender sound has an identity. I think we think clean and chimey, Marshall sound is darker and it's a British voice. Mm -hmm. But Dumble's really tough because he made his amp specifically for people. But that being yeah. said, is it similar? Possibly up close that you're going to see some structures that are kind of the same. But when you when you zoom out, they're just very very different. And I think what you're referring to is when I think of Dumble style pedals. I think of, you know, Way Huge has one, Vertex has a few. Yeah, they do a thing. J Rocket's um, another one. Yeah, they yeah. do a thing. Yeah. And it's yeah, they're different. We don't have anything like that. If if any mm -hmm. pedal fell into a dumble esque tone, I think the moonshine achieves oh. the distorted tone of when people think dumble Larry Carlton three thirty five kind of stuff. Saturated tones. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, uh, this maybe is a leading question into the next uh, pedal. Yeah. What's got more headroom, the Super Bowl or the tw Twin 12? Twin 12. Twin 12? Yeah, Twin 12. Nice. Yeah, absolutely. Let's now go over to the Andy Timmons signature. So the Andy Timmons signature came from the Angry Charlie. Uh, so we're on the version 3 here, but in version 2... I almost discontinued the Angry Charlie altogether. I was like, it's not selling. And I had a choice to make. It was between the All-American distortion or the Angry Charlie distortion. And I remember like almost killing the Angry Charlie. Just had too many pedals to make. I couldn't facilitate manufacturing them the way we were doing it. And I decided last second, 
the truest distortion pedal of the line is the Angry Charlie. So let's ditch the All-American because it does too much. It does overdrive boot. It's a rat. So, yep. you know, it's a little hard to explain. And some there are sounds that aren't good in it. You know, a lot of pedals are like that. So I stuck with that. And then it just kind of sold whatever. And then about a year later, it's like droves of orders out of nowhere. No idea what the heck is going on. And I get tipped off that it had been on the pedal show and they're showing this, but it had all come through this relationship with a guitar store in McKinney, Texas, outside of Dallas, called the Guitar Sanctuary next to Andy Timmons' house. And Andy Timmons went in one day and the guy's like, you need to try this because you're always playing backline and you're so dependent on your Mesa distortion channel. You could go play any amp and plug this in. And he's like, yeah, right. And he goes and takes it. And he just like freaks out, gets a few traveling all over. And he just, from that point on, is playing clean amps, backline, and he's using the Angry Charlie. I see him at NAMM and said, hey, is like, dude, thank you. Uh, you're selling droves of these. I mean, it was just like a crazy situation. Uh, and then it's on the pedal show because of him. And then Radiohead, it ends up on the Radiohead boards because of Dan at the pedal show working on It's just insane. Like it all because of Andy spirals into madness so i've often thought back like i'm really glad i didn't kill that pedal hmm. but yeah so this i took and modified it to meet what andy wanted specifically so it is the same circuit topology you could say it's the same car so to speak but this is very modified and you know it meets it meets some needs that he has so first off i think it's notable to talk about this has a three band EQ, like a classic JCM 800 amp. This has the old style controls where you have volume and drive. So think of volume as a master volume on the amp. Then you have drive, which would be like your normal volume of the amp. You keep cranking it, it's distorting, and then you need to trim it back. EQ is the same EQ you'd see on the JB2 pretty much. It's the like master EQ. So low to high and then an air control was because Andy plays strat single coils high gain kind of the Eric Johnson-esque tone category and on different amps you need to figure out how to trim the air frequency off and uh, then this version 2 has a boost in it and then we'll talk about the boost in a second so let me play this and then this is notable this does something this does not and has never done you have the choice of assuming this is a Marshall amp in a box, you actually can choose between 25 watts, 100 watts, and 50 with a three-way switch. So what happens with a 100-watt amp is it's way more headroom. 50 is kind of normal, like all my amps I love are 50 watts. 25 means it's lower headroom, it will distort more quicker. Yeah, so let's demo that. I'm on the Les Paul. play with the headroom toggle so 25 watts way more saturated hundred watts less saturation because it's like a bigger cleaner amp and 50 Air control. One thing I like to do on this is blast the treble side of the EQ and then back the airway off. You hear like all of the harmonics in 
the clipping of the distortion. So, like you can literally hear all of that comes through much clearer. You have that then you have a boost which is literally andy timmons vintage ts808 Whoa. where i i don't think anybody knows this i didn't know that never took time to think about this that's cool i took his 808 the actual one he's toured with for years and years he taped the settings where he used them i fixed all the parameters and this is the volume knob of that so you're actually getting an actual tube screamer in here you can't control it because you shouldn't <laughs> but it's a mid boosted it's an overdrive in its own right um i guess you want that now addison do you want this as well do you I'm want sorry. the tube screamer boost now oh yes please yeah you need that. i always want the tube screamer boost yeah, it's cool. So I'll, uh, real quickly, play this, and then I'll slam that boost into it. It's that super was, cool. That was stellar. Yeah. That's great. What do we got on that? Anybody? Uh, yeah. A we, lot of Andy Timmons fans in the yeah, world. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have a number of questions that I think would be great to hit. So I'll just kind of go on down the line. Let's see if I can kind of do them in a... Also just want to say, yeah. we're not sponsored by Naked Coconut Water either. But... But... Um, but... There's things happening. <laughs> if you're a subscriber to Rhett Scholl's channel, I, I'm not going to tell you to keep an eye out stuff i'm not gonna say things like that i'm just gonna say nothing all right back to you <laughs> uh peter hamill asks um if the andy timmons pedal has a wattage a wattage switch that's a tongue twister what would uh what wattage would the regular uh, angry charlie be in comparison 50 50 yeah okay which is i think oddly enough at the beginning, that's all that Andy used was the 50. And I would like, I remember texting him like, why did we put the switch in there? And then he now he like uses all the other, you know, you're just used to something. But what it does, especially in sessions and just looking for something different with different guitars, he started using it a ton. So, yeah. It, awesome. That's a great question. That is sure. a good question. Yeah. Um, Najind, shout out to you, uh, is an orange amp style amp in a box in the pipeline josh any any thoughts about that would you ever do that no no i've never thought about it why not brian wampler did it it's oh, called the catapult hello catapult he ne may have discontinued it okay it's one of my favorite wampler pedals okay i need to do my favorite wampler pedals episode yeah you do um that's one of them for sure you said catapult catapult okay cool like a catapult yep pulp for yep. orange yep get it makes sense to me i'm yeah. just making sure i've I was talked getting it about right. ryan wampler all episode he makes good stuff i should call him live on the air I whoa all right back to you he'd probably be okay with it <laughs> okay hey, ryan what's up man? hey bro um uh any plans for a heavy metal style pedal and that's maybe a loaded question because i think i know what you're going to answer but i'm gonna let you answer first <laughs> What am I going to say? Predict. I'm, uh, my prediction is you're going to say that some of these pedals can get into quote unquote heavy metal territory. You're correct. Yes. But. Oh. Okay. So heavy metal pedals are interesting because most heavy metal players just use a tube screamer. Ah. Like into a loaded amp. Yep. 
but then yeah you yeah it's a thing where you you know you want a pedal that has a sound so you kick it on and it's that sound yep. which is why these you know you don't want to have to carry this amp around or that's the point of these pedals so yeah. i get that you don't want to have like a separate board that's like here's my metal rig and you're like rigging an amp so yeah um yeah i think i'm not gonna say too much but a design is done Uh uh-oh i don't know what that means what it means it sounds like it should it's on a breadboard two rooms down the hall what but things take forever sometimes and that's all i can tell you it's one of the best names we've ever had on a pedal i mean that's all i'm gonna tell you it sounds fantastic that's Mm. all i'm gonna say though I'm excited for that. Cliff told me about it the other day. I said, "I don't know what you're talking about." Uh, what I, what were you? Anyway, I, moving what? on. That's uh, all we're gonna say here at JHS. I think we were talking about Mark Norton's question. He says, "Do you prefer a good amp in a box or a good preamp pedal, Josh? Do you have an opinion either way?" I think they're like wildly different applications. Yep. yep. Yeah, I think they're wildly different. Depends on what you're going for. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Okay. Let me let's yep. play the PG fourteen. Yeah, for sure. And then yep. let's we're gonna give away a twin twelve. Ooh. Exciting. Right. Okay. So PG fourteen, Paul Gilbert fourteen. Fourteen is his shoe size and mine. And it's funny. A lot of people wanna know. This is Japanese katakana. It spells out Paul Gilbert. Paul lived in Japan. He's technically and literally famous in Japan. It's amazing. I wish I could say that. Like he it's fantastic. He's like a living, like a living, like hero action figure. I don't know. It's hard to describe, but the, the shirts that say famous in Japan, I need to buy him one. Um, so this is our, one of our newest pedals. It's fantastic. And it looks complicated at first, but it's really not. You have to divide it up into two worlds, volume, mid tone and mid frequency are essentially it's just a distortion pedal think of it real simply like that and then push and drive are literally a preamp on the front of your distortion pedal so i'll back up again and even further explain this section here is a distortion pedal but it is an amp in a box it's emulating um classic charlie brown meat singer it's like the middle ground of like a, i would say like a 70s jmp marshall kind of thing silver jubilee rigs uh and then on the front you're pushing it with a mid frequency preamp and that came from the idea of like the haunting mid circuit we've had for a while so i'm going to demo that it does tons of sounds and it does sounds i never even wanted it to do that are amazing This sounds just like a classic fuzz face shoved into a Marshall amp. It's amazing. can vary this with your push settings so you can make it do more overdrive things if you want push is basically a complex and very tweakable overdrive stage like instead of one knob you can kind of play with two there so you just heard that wild high gain sound but listen that's awesome and then more 
Just for fun, I'm going to jump on the zebra guitar. And while you're on the zebra guitar, just for fun, can uh, can you do your best Paul Gilbert face impression impressionation? <laughs> I can't talk today. Bryce Newsom would like to know while you're playing Paul's pedal if you could. I, it's so hard. It's so hard. Okay. 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 I I have to. Can I do that? My daughter loves watching Paul play. Like I've she like gets so much joy from it. It's amazing. Just because he's so like Paul has been such an amazing dude to work with. He loves guitar more than anyone I've ever met. He's such a great teacher. And those the face thing to me is like the epitome of joy with a guitar. He's just so animated. I have no clue what he does. I know what he does, but I don't know how to do it. He's just constantly like, <laughs> you know, I don't know. He's always like dropping his jaw and squinting and it looks painfully joyful. I don't know. Yeah, hear this with the Strat, totally different. The Zebra Strat has tone. Yeah. That thing's gonna get some some love. Let's do a couple Paul Gilbert it. questions and then give away this twin twelve. Um, not a, a Paul Gilbert specific question. Okay. Um, although if you're listening and you have some, shout them out in the comments. But uh, Mike would like to know if these pedals are amp in a box style pedals. Should we be running them closer to the amp instead of where we might normally run uh, an an overdrive pedal? Any thoughts on that, Josh? Yeah. So they're not. I think the trick here and the, the key thing to remember is you cannot, I'm trying to not complicate this question. Yeah. You can't ever fully replicate what an amp's doing in a pedal. You can get so close again, Brian Wampler for the seventh time. It's like, this is an advertisement for him, but he's a master of it. I think we've done a really great job here. But yeah, p where you put them is less of the thing because they are all analog here, but they're emulating that amp. So they still fall into an overdrive distortion category. They're not, it's not like an amp simulator. I think you have to divide amp yeah. simulators, cabinet simulators, things like the Strymon Iridium or the GFI those are a totally different world. These are overdrive distortion pedals. Yeah, so yeah. you just put them there because if you start running high gain mm -hmm. sounds with an all analog circuit after your echoes and stuff, it's like horrible. It's going to yeah. get all gristly. Nobody likes gristle. I don't. I definitely don't I like don't. gristle. I don't like it. No. One more? Yep, one more. That's perfect. Um, we'll, we'll go out on this note. What was the connection point with Paul? Like, how'd you guys meet? Um, how do you get all the characteristics against all his great amps? Like, what, what was that story? What's that story? Yeah, Paul. So I've known about Paul forever. Nick actually told me about Paul Gilbert, which is wild. Nick's dad uh, is like an insanely talented, amazing guitar player in that genre. Uh, he would be like, he's like totally a shredder, like a very tasteful, smart guitar player who knows theory knows the whole fretboard you know like i consider myself like a shoegazing grunge hack on the guitar but like you know i've known his dad for years and years and he would always you know paul gilbert would come up in references and one of nick's albums he would always talk about is get out of my yard so we would talk about that and then suddenly i think over instagram i saw a post someone tagged he had he had the moonshine bonsai yeah i think he had the bonsai on nice. A haunting mids, and I kept just seeing JHS pedal show up. I ta I I jumped over to DMs and said, "Hey, Paul, this is awesome. Fan of your work. You're super fun. Like, yeah, if you if you have any warranty problem, like, just hit me up directly. I can take care of you. Whatever." I ended up getting some other pedals from us, and we just kept talking. Um, and then the pedal specifically came out of a similar situation with Andy where Paul travels all over the world. He's, you know, huge. Like he's playing large venues in Japan, large venues in Brazil, Italy clinics. And he just ends up in a city and they hand him like literally a jazz chorus could be an amp you get. And it was like, can I make a box that kind of does what you're hearing this pedal do? So you can put it with the back line. 
we played with that. We took the idea of using FETs to emulate tubes. He wanted a mid-frequency control that was really strong initially because he has pretty severe hearing loss. That's, you know, most people know that, that, that if you're a huge fan of Paul. And it was specifically and originally to tweak that pedal for his hearing loss, but you end up with these crazy, amazing sounds. It's kind of an unorthodox way to design a pedal. <laughs> and it's really fun. So, yeah. That's cool. All right. Awesome. Want to give this away? You Thanks, got a question? Josh. I do have a question. All right. I'm going to present it here while you talk. All right. So the question is, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to comment so that I don't miss the very first person. The question is, are you guys ready? They're ready. And I'll play it after you ask the question. Ooh, nice. Okay. What year was Dan Electro founded? Oh. What year was Dan Electro founded? First person to get that in, you win a twin twelve. It was founded in New Jersey. Ooh, that's not a New Jersey accent. <laughs> you I did your know. best. <laughs> no comments yet. Ooh, nobody's right yet. Oh my goodness, there's so many comments now. They're rolling in. Josh, play that while I figure out who who won. Just to expound on this, so it is the Silvertone 1484 Twin 12 is what it's called. It's a catalog amp. You would buy it in the Sears catalog. And uh, I have a couple originals. And, yeah, we literally took it apart and did the exact amp schematic, but just replaced the tubes with FETs and um, tweaked this bass control a bit because it's wildly unuseful on the amp. And then we have a red remote, which just does a preamp boost setting. It removes the, the drive stage. But yeah, it's, it's, I like to say, if you combine it with distortion and stuff, you have that like white stripe sound or Beck has always used a 1484. A couple examples, even oddly enough, uh, Coldplay's record, the really sad, depressed, well, it doesn't really, doesn't really, uh specify the cold i can't remember it's has it was the post gwyneth breakup mm. album does anyone know in the room i can't remember i don't anyway it's on that on that record <laughs> Not transparent at all. Medium gain overdrive land. Yeah, we have a winner. We have a winner, Josh. We do have a winner. We all have right. a winner. Take it away. Drum roll. Congratulations to Adam Holt. You were the first. The answer is 1947. And Josh, I'm gonna I'm gonna call an audible. I hope this is okay. You you go for it. Our Jano caster said they were founded in 1947, but 1969 as a brand. Does that sound right? Does that sound about right? that's tough is that tough that's tough yeah the thing is there were so many products made by the guy got it tons of oem okay okay i don't know what to do there yeah well here's the thing the audible oh, was adam holt you were first but uh our jano caster we're gonna give you a pedal too let's do it because that's a that's a great double piece of historical pedal information. giveaway double pedal giveaway double. today double pretty crazy fantastic before we go, because that's a good note to go out on, we have a shirt I will release on an actual episode. I've been wearing it today. It's very stylish. Uh, it's called the Just Try Stuff. Now, basically most of the questions we are asked are answered with the term Just Try Stuff. Just you know, we're shut at this pedal. Just Try Stuff. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, this idea, this is by a local artist. He's done a ton of our 
He's actually done every limited release shirt. All the artists are not limited, but Loud is More Good, Eclipse by Fuzz, and this is him as well. When I was a kid, I used to wake my parents up on Saturday morning by turning on the cartoons too loud on the giant console TV, and uh, they unplugged it one Saturday morning, and I walked in, and I did not know how to plug things in, and I shocked the crap out of myself. So this is kind of a homage to that. Um, here it is. It's awesome. And it's just a reminder to try stuff. You can do anything you want with pedals and guitar. You can plug things in backwards. You're not going to hurt it. You're not going to, well, you know, you get to amps. You don't want to kill yourself with that. But pedals, try them in any order. Try them any way you want. Yeah, just try stuff. That is live right now. There will probably be a link in the description. But you can just go to the jhsshow.com um, to check that out if you want. We also have all kinds of other stuff there. Like we have episodes. You can go in and kind of comb through that. There's articles of every, this is an old screenshot, but there are tons of articles. You can suggest an episode. Yeah, it's endless. There's record time. Uh, you can go in and see every single record suggested. It's a really killer site. We've been working on it really hard and uh, really proud of it. And then also we have the JHS Show Patreon where there's exclusive long-form talks. I've just finished quite a few. Um, yep. I did um, – the latest one is History of Clones Part 1, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yep. the Big oh. Muff. I cover the history of Big Muff clones from the start of what I think was the first on. We did a, uh, a long talk called Color and Effect – where I did a lot of research for a book chapter I wrote for another person. It's the history of why petals are the color they are. It's actually quite fascinating. It's wild. There's all kinds of long form talks and we do one of those a month exclusive Q and A's. We're about to ramp that up to do even more stuff. So yeah, check it out. Congratulations on the winner of the two twin twelves. Yes, Is there anything yes. else? I don't think so. We're going to wrap. We good? I think we're good. I'm good. We're good. This has been fun. Thanks for hanging out with us. Amps in a box. Yeah, go Google that. Tons of stuff comes up now. You're in the golden age of pedals. I'm proud of what we've done here at JHS, but there's a lot of great builders doing amps in a box, a lot of innovative stuff, and a lot of really fun stuff. Yeah. All right. Have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Thanks for being here.